Good morning, esteemed judges and professors. We are a team from Puiching Middle School. Today, our topic is Mean Shadow of Rotating Objects. Our project was first inspired by this interesting question on YouTube, which concerns the average shadow area of a rotating unit cube cast by an infinitely high light source. An infinitely high light source implies that the light rays are vertical and parallel. That is, the shadow is orthogonally projected. And as the object rotates, the shadow cast keeps varying. And the answer for this question is 3 over 2, which is derived from Cauchy's finding dated in the 19th century. That is, in R3, the average area of the shadow of a convex object is 1 over 4 times its surface area. Cauchy also published solutions for the case of R2, where the average length of the shadow of a convex object is 1 over pi times its perimeter. Years later, the Cauchy surface area formula was extended to Rn, which is given by the second theorem. And from the above, we can observe that the case of infinite light source has already been thoroughly explored. While all the above mentioned concerns an infinite light source, how about a finite one, which presents a more changing landscape as the projection is no longer orthogonal? Egan investigated the case of the problem in R3. More specifically, he derived a formula for the mean shadow of regular polyhedron cast by a finite light source. Summaries on their findings are given below, and we can see that for the case of finite light source, the position of the light source and the rotation center can no longer be neglected. Egan investigate the case of the problem, where the light source is directly above the center of the regular polyhedron, and the polyhedron is rotating about its center. Stepping back into R2, we would like to establish a groundwork of the 2D analog of Egan's work. Therefore, just like Egan, we'll focus on the most fundamental problem of mean shadow of regular M-sided polygon rotating about its center with light source directly above the center. And we denote the relative heights of the rotation center and the light source as H and delta, respectively. To find the mean shadow, we first make use of the convex property. That is, every straight line passing through a convex object intersects the edge of the object exactly twice. Hence, the factor 1 over 2 appears in our formula. Next, by rotational symmetry, all edges of the regular polygon are actually identical. Therefore, we can consider the m edges separately, and hence the factor m appears in our formula. Lastly, by introducing the coordinate system, we set the rotation center as the origin and consider the edge projection on the x-axis instead of on the ground. By doing so, we can further simplify future calculations. And now, all that remains for us is to determine the mean projection of a single edge. And let us define the single edge as follows. We let this vertical displacement be eta and half length as sigma, while theta shall represent the angle of rotation in anti-clockwise direction. And by solving for the end points of the projection, we have the length of the edge projection given by the absolute value of S1 theta. And to calculate the antiderivative of S1 theta, we first utilize tangent half angle substitution, followed by partial fraction decomposition and the use of the arc hyperbolic tangent identity, which gives the following result. And to handle the absolute value of S1 theta, we determine the sign changing points, which is given by theta1 and theta2. And substituting them back into the antiderivative, we have the mean shadow of the edge. And by reassembling the edges into a regular polygon, we have completed the 2D analog of Egan's work. That is, we derive a formula for the mean shadow of a regular M-sided polygon with circumradius r. And we conduct numerical verification and find that the mean shadow over perimeter converges to 1 over pi as the light source height delta tends to infinity, which matches Cauchy's results. Having completed the 2D analog of Egan's work, it's time for us to relax the constraints imposed on the system. From the table below, we can observe that for the case of finite light source, there are still many limitations. The shape is limited to regular polygons, the light source position confined to be above the center of the polygon, and the rotation center is confined to be at the center of the polygon. For that reason, we aim to free the restrictions by allowing arbitrary light source position, arbitrary rotation center, and convex polygons. With the relaxation of constraints, we introduce new variables, namely tau and lambda, to denote the horizontal displacement of the edge and the light source. And hence, we can achieve the expression for the length of the edge projection at a certain angle of rotation, which is given to be absolute value of S3 theta. And the antiderivative of S3 theta can be calculated in a similar manner to S1 theta, which gives us the expression with the first part as an arc hyperbolic tangent and the second part having two arc tangents. 
And once again, to handle its absolute value, we determine its sign changing points given by theta1 and theta2. And after plugging in, we have the mean shadow of the edge, an expression with like four arctangents, not exactly so pleasant, right? Therefore, further simplification is needed. Making use of the arctangent addition formula results in five cases, which by ruling out some impossible case, we can reduce to three cases and finally to a single unified case. Hence, we obtain the mean shadow of an edge. And once again, by reassembling the edges into a convex polygon, we arrive at the following theorem, which gives the mean shadow of the convex pro polygon as the following formula, which is solely determined by the relative position of the vertices to the rotation center as well as the position of the light source. Besides, it's worth noting that the, the result is independent on the size of lambda. For that reason, we propose the following non-trivial theorem on the invariance of mean shadow on flipping light sources about rotation centers. As demonstrated by the two curves on the right, as the object rotates at a certain angle of rotation, the shadow clearly differs as indicated by the two distinct curves. However, the overall shadow which is represented by the area under the curves, are actually identical. While simulations conduct on computer also validate our findings. And as a quick example, by plugging in this set of conditions into our formula, we can easily compute the mean shadow of the unit square rotating about one of its axes, which vertices, which is given to be roughly 3.37. And now, having Having freed the uh, con constraints on the position on the light source and rotation center, we now extend the shape from convex polygons to convex curves. And for the case of the light source directly above the rotation center, we consider a convex closed piecewise smooth curve C parameterized by a vector function R of t. After some rough calculations, we propose the following conjecture, which gives the mean shadow of the curve as a line integral. And to validate our conjecture, we shall consider two simple cases. The first one as C being a circle rotating about its center. Since for a circle, the shadow at any particular orientation is actually the same. Therefore, its mean shadow can be easily computed. And the expression derived from the conjecture actually matches with this fact. As for the second case, as the light source height delta tends to infinity, the mean shadow of C then becomes one over pi times the parameter of C, which matches Cauchy's results. Actually, we propose the conjecture after the submission of the paper, and we'll give a brief idea on how it's obtained. That's because by approximating a con convex closed curve with a polygonal chain, we can apply our mean shadow theorem on convex polygons, and hence calculate the mean shadow of the curve. And now we propose a way to deal with non-convex shapes. First of all, note that for a non-convex polygon, the mean shadow of it is equal to the mean shadow of its convex hull. We prove the conjecture after the submission of the paper, and we include a sketch of proof here, but due to the time constraints, we won't cover it here. If you are interested, you may ask us later on. And now, as we can approach non-convex connected shapes with non-convex polygons, we propose that for non-convex connected shapes, its mean shadow is equal to the mean shadow of its convex hull. And now, to conclude, the flowchart below summarizes the outline of our research, we begin with the 2D analog of Egan's work and gradually relax the constraints imposed on the position of the light source and the rotation center. In the meantime, we achieve the mean theor shadow theorem on convex polygons, which gives a closed form expression for the mean shadow of convex polygons. We also prove the invariance on mean shadow on flipping light sources about rotation centers. In the end, we extend our work from polygons to curved shapes by proposing conjectures involving approximation by polygonal chain. We also remove the convex conditions on the shapes to all connected shapes by considering the convex hull of the shapes. That's all for our presentation. Thank you.